Welcome to another OS Ablo Academy webinar. Today's webinar is going to be on Sargent exit devices. My name is Russell Corvo, and I will be your lead instructor today. During this webinar, your, your lines will be muted. However, you can pose questions using the question, of, question and answer icon at the bottom of the page. And then we will save time at the end for your questions. This session should last about 45 minutes. And during this session, your lines will be muted. However, you, as I just said, you can pose questions. Uh, within 24 hours, you will receive an email as your proof of attending this webinar that can be submitted to your employer or one of the industry, so industry, industry association partners such as DHI or ALOA. Also within 24 hours, this presentation will be available on the ASA Apollo Academy website to be reviewed again. So let's get started with Sergeant exit devices. I always think it's a good idea to show you where the exit devices are made. So this is the Sergeant factory in New Haven, Connecticut. Here's a nice bird's eye view of it. It's right on Long Island Sound. It's a huge facility and it's still been functioning throughout this entire crisis that's been going on with the pandemic. So we're gonna start off by talking about Sergeant's 80 series exit devices to start with. First off, all the 80 series exit devices are ANSI BHMA grade one exit devices, and all of the exit devices are available fire rated. With Sergeant, you specify fire rated by specifying a 12 dash. And if you're not aware of it, right in the beginning of the catalog, you're gonna find this list here, and this is the fire ratings for um, Sergeant exit devices. Across the top, you're going to find different applications of exit devices, whether it's swinging in the same direction, opposite directions, that type of setup. During this side here, you're going to find the list of our exit devices of rim, mortise, concealed vertical rod, and surface vertical rods. Here, you're going to find the, the door material type, either wood or metal doors. And then overall here is telling you what the the standard is on whether it's met a three hour rating and what size opening it's good for. Sargent's exit devices have a five year mechanical warranty and that includes Sargent's electric latch retraction. Just not, just so I don't mislead anyone, the rest of our electromechanical products have a two year warranty, but the, electro, the electric latch retraction and the mechanical warranty is five years. Sargent does offer a complete line of exit devices. Here we have our 8900 series mortise lock exit devices, our rim exit devices, which is the 8800 series, our 8700 is our surface vertical rod, and our 8600 is our surface, is our concealed vertical rod. We also offer three narrow style devices. The 8500 is a narrow style rim. We also offer the 84, which is a narrow style concealed vertical rod. And we also offer a narrow look, um, looking type of exit device. So this is the 8300. This uses the same mortise lock as the nine, the 8900 series mortise lock does. So it does require a full size style, even though it has the appearance of being a, a narrow style exit device. One thing that's really nice is that Sargent has recently developed the 8800, the 8500, the 8600, and the 8800 series exit devices are now all available where the exit device will release with less than five pounds of pressure per ADA standards for the accessibility design and California building code enhancements. So all of these exit devices are now available with less than five pounds to release. This is a requirement only in California at this point. And if you need this requirement, it is specified with a 5CH and it is specified as an option such as 5CH followed by the series and the function, the trim, the hand, the finish, and the door width. Another very unusual thing with Sargent exit device is that you may not realize is that Sargent's include cylinders with all exit devices. Most manufacturers do not include cylinders with their exit devices and they have to be purchased separately and matched up separately. With Sargent, we manufacture our own cylinders, so we actually supply exit devices with cylinders automatically. You can always order them less cylinders, but they always come to you with cylinders automatically. We do offer four different stock sizes. The E-size rail is good for a 32-inch door out of the box and can be cut down for a 24-inch door. The 
F size rail is for a 36 inch door to a 33. A J is for a 42 right out of the box, can be cut down to 37. And a G is for a 48 inch, and that can be cut down to 43. So we offer four different stock sizes. But one really unusual thing about sergeants is that sergeants will cut every exit device to the exact door width at no additional charge or lead time. As far as I know, there is nobody else in the industry to, that does that. All you have to do is give us the door width and we will cut it to the correct size. I know I just mentioned the letters E, F, J, and G. A lot of people find those confusing. So if you do find those confusing, just tell us where the door width is. Tell us the exit device is going on a 38 inch wide door and we will make sure it's cut for a 38 inch wide door. It doesn't affect the price or the lead time. So why does Sergeant do this? because about 90% of our sales are stainless steel. And stainless steel is very difficult to cut. It's a very durable material and that's why we use it in our exit devices. Even the St. Louis Arch and the Chrysler Building both use stainless steel and aluminum. And for those of you who aren't familiar with stainless steel, what makes stainless steel special is that st stainless steel is a steel alloy that contains more than 10.5% chrome. And that's what makes it stainless steel. Let's take a closer look at stainless steel. All steels are iron alloys. Adding chromium to iron creates stainless steel. Chromium atoms react with oxygen in the air to form a thin, invisible layer that protects the stainless steel. If the surface becomes damaged, this layer reforms, protecting the steel each time keeping it both stainless and resistant to corrosion. This process is called self-passivation. And this self-passivation is what makes stainless steel so unique that it won't rust and it doesn't corrode. And as you know, it's the first choice for kitchens, convalescent homes, schools, and exit devices. Some manufacturers, not sergeants, some manufacturers will use a very thin piece of stainless steel over an aluminum base because they know stainless steel is very durable and that's why they put it over, they put it over the aluminum, but the aluminum is not as durable. Sergeant's approach is very different. We make the whole thing out of stainless steel. The cover is going to be stainless steel, the mounting rail is stainless steel, the push rail, the insert, the end cap, even the latch bolt is stainless steel. Just so you know, Sargent's always supplies true architectural finishes. So if you order a brass rail, it will have a brass cover, brass mounting rail, brass push rail, brass end cap, and brass insert. Same thing for bronze. If you order a bronze finish, you will get a true architectural finish, and the base metals will be correct. The only thing that's really not the correct finish is the touchpad. Our touchpad is made out of Lexan, which is a very strong and durable thermal plastic. It actually identifies where to push on the exit device as you're exiting, so it makes it easy to, to find which side to push on. And it also allows us a certain amount of ingenuity. It allows sergeants to have our electro or our SAR guide, which is specified with a TL option. This uses a 24 volt power supply and produces its own light, so you can identify where the exit is quickly in the dark. If you prefer not to have our touchpad, you can always order our touchpad less, you can always order our exit devices less touchpad. And to order them less touchpad, all you need to do is specify 19 dash. And that's how you would order them less touchpad. With all Sergeant exit devices, both fire rated and non fire rated, Sergeant supplies both wood screws for wood doors and machine screws for machine doors. When it comes to classroom security, Sergeant does offer a classroom security exit device. It is the 8816. And if you specify 49 dash in the beginning as an option, it's going to give you the indicator. And the indicator will tell you whether the outside lever is locked or unlocked. In the image up here on the upper right, you can tell that this ex that the outside trim is locked because of the red label, they're telling you that it's locked. So that's the indicator that's specified as a 49 dash. If you want the classroom security with a key on the inside to lock and unlock the outside lever, that is gonna be a 16 function. As I mentioned previously, our standard mechanical warranty is five years. Our electromechanical warranty is two years. 
Another nice thing that Sargent has developed is they've actually incorporated the EcoFlex technology into our exit device trend. So now it's feel selectable, fail safe, fail secure. So if you happen to, you're always going to be ordering it as a fail safe or a fail secure product. But if you order the wrong product, you would always change it from fail safe to fail secure. And the ET trim is fully backwards compatible with existing Sargent ET trims. I'm going to show you something. You might get a kick out of this. As I told you, all you need to do is move a simple little switch right here to change it from fail safe to fail secure. Some manufacturers actually expect you to do this to change it from fail safe to fail secure because their solenoid has to be flipped over. They're not using the type of technology that Sargent uses. We wouldn't ask you to do this. It's just a simple switch. The other nice thing with Sargent is that our lock will operate on 12 or 24 volts right out of the box. You don't even need to specify it any longer. So you don't even need to specify voltage. Hook it up to a 12 or 24 volt power supply will work no problem. And it's very, very energy efficient. And that has been certified by Green Circle. If you want to monitor the outside lever handle, that would be specified as a 54 dash. And therefore you would have a micro switch in there to monitor the outside lever handle. And that's specified as a 54 dash. We also offer a self-contained delayed egress device. So where is a self-contained delayed egress device used? These are used frequently in L Alzheimer's wards nowadays. They're used in maternity wards to prevent people from stealing babies. And you see them all over at the airports. What a delayed egress device does is it prevents someone from exiting for 15 seconds. It allows security to go over and see who's trying to exit within those 15 seconds. After the 15 seconds, it will allow you to evacuate immediately. So it will only delay it for 15 seconds. Okay, Sargent offers two versions of this. The 59 dash is a self-contained unit. We also offer what we call our 57 dash. Our 57 dash has all the electronics built into the exit device, but there's an electromagnet used to keep the door closed. Okay. So the standard time you can hold someone is 15 seconds, and that is going to be hooked up to the fire alarm system. The minimum door width that we allow is 36 inches. And Sargent does offer a Boca device. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Boca code, if you're not aware of it, according to NFP 101, um, when, a delayed e when someone goes through a delayed egress device, someone manually has to go over there with a key and reset the exit device. What the Boca code does is it allows the door to be reset automatically, but the door also has to have a door position switch in it. So once someone violates the opening, the door will close, the door position switch will recognize that, and the, and the, ex and the exit device will rearm itself, preventing anyone else from exiting. That's what the Boca device allows you to do. The standard devices, you actually have to go over with a key and reset it manually every time. As I mentioned before, our electric latch retraction has a five-year warranty, so you're covered until 2025. And we use a very different type of motor here. It's called a linear or step motor. And it's a really unique motor. We'll talk a little bit more about it later. One nice thing is you can use it with anybody's power supply. It's, we, we, we do require 24 volts, but you can use it with anybody's power supply as long as it's filtered and regulated. It does require less than a one amp inrush, which is really nice. So you can have a very small power supply to operate the exit device. And also, if you're going to be using our exit devices with a low energy operator to meet ADA requirements for a hands-free opening, if you're not aware of it, the Norton 6000, the Norton 5600, uh, the Norton 5700, and the Norton 6300 all have a 24 volt power supply built right into their low energy operator. This is more than enough power to operate our exit device. So if you're using our electric latch retraction with a Norton operator, you don't even have to buy another power supply, which saves you money right there. With Sargent, we have a built-in timer. By adjusting these three toggles here at the end, you can adjust the timer from zero to 20 seconds. And we have built-in diagnostics. So if, you ever, if you're ever having an issue, all you need to do is remove the end cap. And when you remove the end cap, this is what you're going to see at the end of the rail. And this light is going to blink in a certain manner telling you you have an issue. So steady flashing is normal operation. So when there's power to it, it should be flashing steadily. But for example, if you have a solid light, 
that meant the input voltage has dropped out of range. So maybe the power supply is too far away. So the first thing you want to do is grab your multimeter and check what kind of voltage are you getting at the exit device? Are you getting close to 24 volts? Continuing on, you can get our electric latch retraction with our standard cylinder dogging. Our cylinder dogging is specified with a 16 dash and it is available with our electric latch retraction. You can also get a request to exit switch. What a request to exit switch, a request to exit switch monitors the push rail. So you know when someone's trying to exit. You can order the request to exit switch with the Sergeant Electric Latch Retraction by specifying 55 dash for uh, request to exit switch. And Sergeant's is really big into testing. We've actually tested our electric latch, retac uh, our electric latch retraction electronically over 13 million times. And if you've never seen an electrified cycle test, this is what it looks like. The plunger, the rail is a retracted electronically. The plunger pushes on the door to open it and then to verify it's closed and latched. And then verify it's closed. It did this over 13 million times. But that's not it. That's not the only thing. We have what we call our rain booth in New Haven, Connecticut. And in this rain booth, we put all of our electromechanical products in, in there to make sure that they will continue to operate even if they are getting rained on. We're not saying you could use it on an open gate, but they can handle some weather, but they are designed for indoor usage. We also offer photoluminescence. Photoluminescence actually absorbs ambient light and glows in the dark. If you're looking for this option, it's specified as a PL option. So PL for photo, photoluminescence. And as I mentioned before, you can get electroluminescence and that's specified as a TL for the SAR guide. And with Sargent products, here I'm showing you an Electrolinks connector. This is a four pin Electrolinks connector. All of the products that come out of Sargent always come out with an eight pin connector except for one product, and that's this product here. The TL does come with a four pin connector. All of our other products will come with an eight pin connector. And if we need more than eight wires running through the door, then we'll have an eight pin and a four pin connector, okay? We also offer a self-contained delayed, excuse me, a self-contained a self alarmed exit device. It's battery operated, but it also can be hard powered with a 546 wire harness kit. And you do have some advantages by hard wiring it because it does allow for remote alarm reset, uh, external inhibit, remote power and remote monitoring. And just so you know, the latch bolt and the latch bolt and the rail are guarded on this or are monitored on this. So you know when someone's trying to evacuate. If you ever have to wire up an exit device, Sergeant and Os Abloy made it very easy with the Molex connectors. It's a simple plug and play situations, and we have a st standard wire colors for each of the locations at Sargent's. So instead of using wire nuts like they used to do in the past, and here you would depend on the installer making sure that he matched up the correct wire with the correct other wire, and there's a lot you're depending on the installer for. With the Electrolink system, it just simply plug and play, which makes it much easier. And very rarely will you find any issues with the wiring using the Electrolink connectors. And we do have a card that identifies where each of the colors are gonna be located within the Molex connectors. And keep in mind that uh, Asa Abloy owns other companies like McKinney and Marcar that will make electrified hinges so you can power, so you can run the power from the frame to the door. Now we're going to take a few minutes and look at some additional options for Sargent's exit devices. Actually, we're going to look at all the options for Sargent's exit devices now. Okay, 12 dash specifies fire rating. A 14 dash specifies a sliding brass bolt. Our standard bottom bolt for our surface vertical rod is going to be stainless steel. Here we're offering a 14 dash, which is a brass bolt. And this might be more beneficial than stainless steel in a highly corrosive environment where you're getting a lot of salt water and a lot of chlorine. Because this, don't forget brass is a marine grade material and therefore it won't rust or break down at all. If you're looking for standard cylinder dogging, that's specified as a 16 dash. 
and our exit device will come, our, our panic exit device will come with hex key dogging standard. But if you don't want hex key dogging, then you're going to specify LD to get it less dogging. Once again, 19 dash specifies uh, less touchpad. And our standard strike on our mortise lock exit devices is a curved lip strike. But if you're looking for a flat lip strike opposed to a curved lip strike, we do offer that. And that is specified as a 23 dash. Continuing on, if you ever have a special door thickness that's thicker than one and three quarter inches thick, you do need to specify that. And you're specifying that as a 31 dash at the beginning of the ordering string. And at the end of the ordering string, you go ahead and tell us the actual door thickness. We also offer security torque head screws. We also offer spanner head screws. We do offer a flush mount end cap, and that's specified as a 43 dash. Sergeant standard end cap is a wrap around end cap. And as we talked about previously, the 49 dash gives you the indicator on the 8816 exit devices so you can tell when the outside lever is locked or unlocked. As I just mentioned, our standard exit device is a wrap around end cap. The nice reason, the reason why our standard is that way, because if you ever have to cut our exit devices in the field, this will cover up any imperfections very easily. Our end cap brackets are an eighth of an inch thick and we thread all of our holes. We only use machine screws. Some other manufacturers use self-tapping screws. We don't use any self-tapping screws. We just use machine screws and we thread all the holes. Therefore, they last forever. Okay. Um, the bracket actually gives the whole exit device more support. But if you're not, if you don't want the wraparound design and you want the flush mount design, as I just mentioned, you can get that. And that's specified as a 43 dash. I know some manufacturers will tell you, oh, there's a catch point here. So we do offer the 43 dash. It doesn't change the price and there is no lead time change, but specify 43 dash. If you want to monitor the position of the latch bolt, that's a 53 dash. Monitoring the outside lever is a 54 dash again. And monitoring a request to exit or mon a push rail monitoring is 55 dash. If you're looking for electric latch retraction, that's going to be a 56 dash. And if you want it with hex key dogging, it's going to be 56 HK for hex key dogging. As I mentioned before, we also offer a delayed egress device that's used in conjunction with an electromagnet. That is Sargent's 57 dash. Sargent also offers a 58 dash. This is an electric dogging. What electric dogging is, is with electric dogging, the rail has to be pushed in manually the first time. Then it, as long as it's electrified, it will stay in the dog position until the electricity is dropped from the rail. As soon as the electricity is dropped from the rail, it will become undogged. But someone manually has to push it in the first time to dog it down. We also have the delayed egress device and we have the delayed egress device with Boca. And to order a Boca device, it's going to be a BC5900. As I mentioned, we also have the alarmed exit device, and we also offer the photoluminescence. When it comes to handicap warnings, we offer two different types. Uh, we offer 76, which is milled, milled slots on the outside lever. And we also offer an abrasive coating that can either be on the outside lever, on the touchpad, or both locations. If you want to order less bottom rod for our surface vertical rods or our concealed vertical rods, then you're going to be specifying NB for no bottom. And once again, if you're looking for photoluminescence, that's going to be specified as a PL. One thing that you need to be aware of for our concealed vertical rod exit devices, it's very important that you include the material that the door is going to be mounted in. So if the door is going to be a metal door, you want to specify MD for metal door. If it's going into a wood door, then you want to specify WD for a wood door. And if it's going into an aluminum door, you want to specify AD for aluminum door. And this is critical because it does change the way it's mounted. For example, here, a WD8600, the screws come in from the very top and the screws come in from the bottom. So there are no screws on the face of the door and the door looks beautiful. With our MD8600 and our AD8600, you will have two little screws at the very top of the door on the inside surface. 
okay? And, the, and here we're showing you how the bottom is attached. Okay. So you can always order Sargent's exit devices, less bottom rod, and you would be doing that by specifying NB for less bottom rod. Sargent recently developed this new uh, top and bottom strike used with, our, with, used with aluminum frames. And the nice thing about this new strike is, is that you don't need the frame to be pre-prepped for it. You can actually drill three holes, countersink two of them. This thing slides into the holes, and these holes are th these holes are threaded on the strike. So you're actually pulling the strike down into the hole, and this gives you the correct material for the stainless steel bolt to ride in and out of. Keep in mind, if you're ever ordering a fire-rated exit device, less bottom rod, you will receive thermal pins. The thermal pins are required and they are gonna be located towards the bottom of the door to prevent the bottom of the door from separating. Another unique thing with Sargent, and you need to be aware of this, is that Sargent's will cut all the rods to the exact door, door height. So you do need to specify that. Okay, so you, anytime you order anything with vertical rods, you have to tell us the door's opening height and the AFF. AFF stands for above the finish floor. Sergeant standard AFF is 41 inches. So if you're gonna be mounting our exit devices any place other than 41 inches, you need to tell us that, okay? Because that's where we're gonna assume you're gonna be mounting at 41 inches. And you always have to include the opening height. That is mandatory. We will not accept an order without the opening height, okay? So our standard is 41 inches. And just so you're aware, other manufacturers do have different mounting heights. For example, Corbin Rosswin's mounting height for their exit devices is 39 and 15 16 So it's slightly lower than the Sargent exit device. So how do you order a Sargent exit device? Once again, you always specify the options first are gonna be listed first. And here I'm specifying electric latch retraction. Then you would specify the exit device. Here I'm calling out the 8500. I'm calling out the 8500 because I wanna talk a little bit more about it. A few years ago, we made some really nice enhancements to the 8500. The 8500 chassis is now made out of 4041 steel for greater strength and durability. And our hubs and lift levers are made out of stainless steel for even greater strength. So it's become much more durable and it's available fire rated. In the past, it was not. So it's a much more heavy duty product. Okay, next you wanna specify the function. And what you'll find is that Sargent's does list the cylinder requirements for each of the exit devices in the catalog. Next, you wanna mention the rail size, if you're gonna use the rail size, but don't forget, you don't have to include it if you include a door width with your ordering string. For Sargent's, you always specify the escutcheon or the rows first, so it's an ET trim with, in this case here, it's an MR lever, and we're calling out that lever right there. And we do offer a full variety of levers. So you always specify the ET first, followed by the lever designation. And we do have some with a single letter designation are our standard and our coastal series. You'll find that all of our studio collections have a two letter designation and our Gramercy and our Worcester Park and Grant Park have three and four letter designations. You may not be aware of this, but with Sargent's ET trim, you can easily change functions with it. For example, if you have, if you buy a, 60, a 607-2 kit, it makes a, a 713 ET function. A 713 means that the key locks and unlocks the trim, okay? You can convert that function into an 06 function. And what an 06 function does, the key unlocks the lever, the lever retracts the bolt, but once the key is removed, it's locked all the time, so it cannot be unlocked. So we do offer a kit, the 607-2 and the 607-1, so you can change functions fairly easily. With our exit devices, we always ask for the hand, so always supply the hand. And keep in mind, exit devices are always field, are always reverse bevel, okay? So if the hinges are on the left-hand side, it's a left-hand reverse bevel. And if the hinges are on the right-hand side, it's a right-hand reverse bevel. And this is always viewed from the outside of the door as we're doing right here. Next, we wanna specify the finish. And Sargent's will accept either the US finishes that Sargent's normally uses or will accept the BHMA finishes. Either one are perfectly acceptable. 
And then finally the door width. So here we're specifying a 34 inch door. So that means they will cut the exit device to for a 34 inch door, does not change the price or anything. So now we're gonna take a moment out and we're going to figure out how to price one of these exit devices. So when you look at the catalog, the catalog is broken up into different groups. You have general information to start with, then you have keys and cylinders, then you have board locks, followed by multi-point locks, and then, or followed by mortise locks, then multi-point locks, then door closers, and then finally exit devices, okay? So the order, order of importance when ordering an exit device is the exit device type followed by the trim, the function, and the finish, and then you add in the options. So we're gonna to go to the exit device pages for our exit device. So when you look at the two pages, you always have to look at the two pages together when you're looking at the Sargent catalog. So we have ED36 on the left-hand side and ED37 on the right-hand side. So the options always have to be on the left and the product is always on the right. And therefore the options and the product face each other. You'll find that a lot of people find our catalogs really good. And some people don't even use our regular catalogs because our price book is so good. For example, here it's specifying a 12 dash. It's saying it's a UL fire labeled exit device. Okay. But right here it's telling you, Hey, you can't get that with 16 dash cylinder dogging and you can't get it with HK. So it tells you certain things that you can't get it with. So you don't order things by mistake. And then lastly, it will tell you what the upcharge is or if there's no add or if it's a decrease in the price. When you look at the two pages across the top of the right hand page, you want to find our lever designs grouped into different groupings here. In this first grouping here, you want to find all of our standard levers, all of our coastal series levers, and all of our studio collections all in this first grouping. The only thing that this does include are the Gramercy, the Worcester Park, and the Grant Park series. And because of all these are grouped together, that means all of these are going to be the same price. Okay, so whether it's coastal series, standard or studio collection, they're all going to be the same price. The price is going to vary based on finish, but those are all going to be the same price. Next, you have the Gramercy series, the Worcester Park, and the Grant Park. Those are all going to be the same price also because they're grouped together. All of our pulls are the same price. They are grouped together. And lastly, you have the various pulls that we offer. So once you figure out what lever design you want, then you're going to come down here and you're going to look at the two different finishes to two different groupings. So in our first grouping, we have 10BE, 32D, and black suede powder coat and white suede powder coat. All of those are going to be one price. And then all the other finishes, the 03, 04, 09, 10, 10B, 10BL, 20D, and 32D are all going to be in this column here. Okay, then when you look at your function, what you're going to find here is that the first one listed here in the red or the off red has no external trim, and that's why it's less expensive than, than the rest. Everything in this first grouping in the yellow box, those all have single cylinder functions, and these are all the same price. So whether you buy a dummy function, a storeroom, a, a passage function, or an office function, they're all going to be the same price. Next in the blue square is the classroom security, and that is a double cylinder function, okay? What I'm showing you here is that, notice these big blank areas here. That means these functions are not available with these pull trims, and that's why there is no price in this grouping here. So if the area is completely blank, that means there is no price. Those functions are not available. And then going down the page a little further, you have the freewheeling trim, our electrified trim, and our general notes. So this is the way you always want to use the catalog. Options on the left, the product on the right. So this is going to be our sample question. So this is our hardware set. And what we're looking for here is a Sargent 12-56-8813. Okay, 12 dash is a fire rated exit device. 56 dash is electric latch retraction. 8800 is a rim exit device. 13 function means that the key locks and unlocks the outside trim. They want an ET trim with an MA lever. MA has two letter designation, so we know it's part of the studio collection. So it's gonna be in that first grouping for a right hand reverse bevel, 32D, and we do want it cut 
for a 34 inch door. So that's going to be the product that we're going to be off looking for. So when we look at the price book and we go to the table contents, we want to look for the 8800 series options and the rims. Don't forget, you always use the two pages together. So we're going to jump ahead to these two pages. And here we are. So here we have the options on the left and the product on the right. So when we look at our price, when we look at our ordering string, the first thing you have to consider is what type of lever do you have? Okay, so we have an MA lever. An MA lever is going to fit into this first grouping because it's part of the studio collection. So right now, you know, and you're in this very first column. The next thing that you want to consider is your finish or is your function. And here you see your function is an 8813. An 8813 is fitting into this middle column here. Okay, so all of these are going to be the same price. So it's going to be 2448. The next thing you need to consider is your finish. And because 32D is in the first column, this is going to be your base price of 2448 is your base price for a 32D finish. And that same price would be the same for a tent, a dummy function, night latch function, a passage function, or key locks or unlocks the outside trim, which makes it simple because all you need to do is count up all the different functions you have and to establish a price. So that's our base price. Once you've established a base price, then you come over and you look at the options. So the next first option that we're looking at is going to be the 12 dash. The 12 dash, as you see here, has a 184 add to it. So we're going to add 184 to the base price. And next we want 56 dash. Looking down further on the option table, 56 dash is remote dogging, latch retraction. And that's 852. So we add the 852, and this will give you your list priced for this product. Hopefully, that made sense to everyone. Next, we're going to take a few minutes and we're going to talk about testing of exit devices. So, how much force do you think your exit device can handle? According to ANSI BHMA Grade 1, an exit device has to withstand 400 pounds of force against the latch, and then the exit device has to continue operating. That's basically someone pulling on the door with 400 pounds of force. Okay, let's take a look at the Sergeant X device for a static load test. We actually went over 2,400 pounds. That's six times ANSI BHMA grade one. When we had this third party verified, we actually failed at 2,479 pounds. When we tested our fire rated device, which is our 12 dash, it actually failed at 2,700 pounds. And when we tested our hurricane device, it actually failed at over 3,000 pounds of force. So looking at quick reference, a quick look at the differences. ANSI BHMA is 400 pounds. Our panic device over 2,400 pounds. Our fire rated over 2,700. And our hurricane over 3,000. Those are incredible numbers. When it comes to cycling an exit device, believe it or not, you only have to go half a million cycles to be a grade one exit device. And if you think about it, that's really not that many. We've actually... Uh, cycle tested our rim exit device on a four foot by 10 foot opening at to 54 million cycles. 54 million cycles. You only go have to go half a million to be a grade one. This is 54 million cycles. We've tested our mortise lock exit device to 51 million cycles. We tested our surface vertical rod on a four foot by 10 foot opening with two point latching to 16.8 million cycles. And even our concealed vertical rod on a 10 foot opening, we tested to more than 20, 20 million cycles. These are incredible numbers. Another unique thing with the Sargent product, if you're not aware of it, is that our chassis, our chassis head is not attached to the rail assembly. So it becomes a single man job to install the product because it's very easy to install the chassis and then slide the rail onto it. A lot of other manufacturers have the chassis and the rail attached, which makes it a much larger product and makes it harder to install. With Sargent, simply install the product and you can forget about it. And one of the best things is, is all of it still being done in New Haven, Connecticut. This is the main pack line for the exit devices in New Haven, Connecticut. 
on the lower right hand side you see the rails being assembled this is where the chassis are assembled we're still doing a lot of the machining um, we're machining chassis here on the upper one for a 20 series so we do the machining of our chassis still in New Haven Connecticut and we're still making things from coil stock in New Haven Connecticut here we're showing the end caps being made the covers being made and here are the rails. We're still doing all the machining for the rails. So we do a lot of work in New Haven, Connecticut. So next, we're gonna take a few minutes, since we have a few minutes left, we're gonna talk about the utility grade exit devices and Sargent's crossbar. Sargent offers two utility grade exit devices, the 30 series and the 20 series. This is the 30 series catalog. This is only available as a rim exit device or as a surface vertical rod exit device. Okay, that's the only way it's available. Uh, it's specified as a 3727, and if you need it fire rated, it's going to be a 12 dash. And for the rim exit device, it's specified as a 3828, and once again, if you need it fire rated, it is specified as a 12 dash. These are only available in painted finishes. One thing I want you to notice here is notice that th this is called the 30 series. Notice the cover design, and notice that there's an insert here. Okay, the reason I'm pointing that out to you because our other utility brand is our 20 series. Our 20 series, the rail runs the full length of the door. Okay, so there is no insert. That is the big visual difference. And of course they have different covers. So the 20 series is available for surface vertical rods and as a rim exit device. Both of these exit devices are ANSI BHMA grade one certified. So to order surface vertical rod, it's a 2727. And if you need it fire rated, it's a 12 2727. And the rim exit device is a 2828 or a 12 2828. These are only available in painted finishes. The, the trim for both of these exit devices is the same. So for both the 30 series and the 20 series, you can order a lever trim as a 28 KLL for a night latch function, as a 28 NLL for a modified night latch function. A storefront function would be a 28 CLL and a passage would be a 28 LLL. We also offer knobs and we do offer poles for this or thumb piece poles and some just some standard flat poles. And lastly, we have our 90 series exit device. Okay, this is our oldest of all our exit devices. This is the crossbar styling. Most often nowadays, this is used in retro to keep the retro look of the olden days back. So with our 90 series, it's available as a rim exit device, both fire rated and panic. It's available as a mortise lock exit device, panic and fire, as a surface vertical rod, panic and fire, and then as a narrow style concealed vertical rod. One nice thing with the 90 series exit devices, it uses all the same trims and pulls that the 80 series exit device does and all the same levers. So it's the same pulls and levers, which makes it very simple, hopefully. Okay, and that brings us to the end of our presentation. That's gonna bring us to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it both educational and enjoyable. And keep in mind that Asa Ablo is offering multiple webinars, oftentimes multiple times a day. And keep in mind, we have over 50 online classes that are all available at no cost. Just simply join the academy and get started learning at your own pace. Thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. And everyone, please stay healthy and take good care of yourself. Thank you very much and have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.